And if you have a look at the actual wording of 678, 687, 1441, there is nothing in any of those uh, resolutions encouraging the use of armed force. Remember, the United Nations Security Council and the United Nations can never authorize the use of armed force. It did use the term all necessary means, though. Exactly. And this is where I refer to that point that Britain is uh, our people, our leaders, none of whom ever have to fight a war themselves, will say, oh, well, all necessary means means uh, cruise missiles and things, you know, like that. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable, and it's all necessary means to bring about peace and security. And it's in the context of peace and peacekeeping. Outlined in the UN Charter. Correct. So these are some of the false assertions of legality by Lord Goldsmith and the yes. government of the time. I've tried very, very briefly, and we haven't got a lot of time here. And on another occasion, I will go into more depth about this, uh, because they are fundamental to the way we run the, the world, our world in this country. And it's very important that the people of this country understand just how deep is the corruption in our law enforcement authorities so that we can leave out a phrase like not involving the use of armed force when we're telling people what the law says. Um, so you pointed out quite clearly how in the international law uh, the basis of the legality of the war in Iraq is pretty much unbounded. Um, but could you point out in British statutes uh, what statute you know, has been disrespected? Yeah. Well, there is a list, yes, I can do so. Um, you'll find virtually any... Um, as part of the Lord Goldsmith's secret legal advice, near the end of it, he says... Um, if I can find the quote. Um, Another force, of force may be used in self-defense if there is an actual or imminent threat of an armed attack. It is now widely accepted that an imminent armed attack will justify the use of force if the other conditions are met. That is absolute rubbish. It may be accepted by widely accepted within the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, but certainly it isn't accepted anywhere in the rest of the world. But the, uh, uh, point of maybe contention would be uh, the types of weapons that would potentially going to be used as a threat against uh, the West. Um, could that be why it went to such an extreme? Because they were supposed to have weapons of mass destruction, therefore it, it took it to a totally different level? I think the important bit to remember is that there is never and ever any excuse to use armed force. And if we say someone else has got weapons of mass destruction, and we need to find a sensible way uh, of getting rid of them. But remember that the real, uh, the nations who have the biggest amount of weapons of mass destruction are America, Britain, Russia, and others. But mainly America and Britain. And we have hundreds of thousands of weapons of mass destruction, uh, which we use every day. And uh, so it was just an excuse used by the British government in order to invade and occupy a weaker, poorer, uh, less well-defended nation. Am I right to understand that um, Israel don't have any such nuclear agreements for the... the, the I don't know about Israel. I think we'll have to leave that until a little bit later. Okay. That's an opportunity for James to ask a few questions. Yeah, yeah. I have some questions for you first. Um, it's, it's fairy tale, isn't it? You're talking fairy tales. You're saying... Uh, it's never acceptable to go to war. So Kellogg uh, Brown uh, treaty says it's never acceptable to go to war. It's a fairy tale. Oh, what's the fairy tale? If, if you say um, United Nations Charter is a fairy tale, if you believe it's a fairy tale, then that's fine. But I, I go back to Britain's fundamental agreements in, under international law. We signed the uh, Kellogg Brown Pact. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's 
see three nations over the side of it. And, you know, we know there's over 150 uh, recognised states by the UN. So, you know, that's an, a third of those states recognised this treaty in 1928. Um, and are you saying as well then that to, to say war is uh, illegal and it's never acceptable then? Uh, when Winston Churchill declared war on Germany, that was unlawful. Uh, we should never have done that. We should never have taken uh, Germany to war. No, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's quite important to understand that. And what happened in the Second World War, first of all, is governed by the Kellogg Graham Pact and not by the laws that are coming after the Second World War. Most of the laws that we talked about. The United Nations Charter didn't come in until 1945. Well, but so, if, we, if we follow this uh, Kellogg Treaty Pact, surely it, w it would be unlawful absolutely. for us to, to declare war on Germany. It certainly would. Right. Uh, now, would that be an acceptable outcome now? No, no, no of course not. Uh, if, if, if Winston Churchill had declared war on Germany, um, and then he would have been in breach of the Kellogg Graham Pact. What happened was that Germany attacked Poland, and we, in self-defense, went to, and said so at the time, we are working with Poland to uh, get rid of Germany. Well, I'm no and history expert, but I do, I do remember very uh, clearly Winston Churchill uh, announcing he was declaring war on Germany. No, it wasn't Winston Churchill, it was actually Neville Chamberlain. So it was declared that? Um, we said that we are now at war with Germany. Germany started a war. Under Article 51 now of the United Nations Charter, the only time in law when it is lawful to use armed force is in self-defense. If you are attacked by another nation, then you have a lawful uh, right to use appropriate proportional we, we weren't force. Attacked. We weren't attacked. You said yourself just a second ago it was uh, an attack on Poland that led to, to that. Uh, we had an agreement with Poland, rather like many nations had an agreement with Kuwait. When Iraq attacked Kuwait, Kuwait asked for help from other people. Yeah. And so are we are now are we gonna when we declare war in Iraq and go to war in Iraq we say that uh, Saddam Hussein to uh, plan uh, a defence or a war against the UK when they invaded uh, Iraq. Is that unlawful? Is that, is that was that unlawful for him to do that? Absolutely. Yes. I mean any, any nation state that starts a war with anyone else is breaking the law. And uh, just, just finally, um, you, you, you know, you've, in your evidence you've made it clear that the UN is not uh, designated to use armed force. Um, so are, we, are you saying that uh, as well if there had been a second resolution, uh, you would have accepted the armed force being used by other states? Or is that not acceptable either? No, absolutely. There is no occasion, and it's quite clearly laid out in this uh, declaration, where the use of armed force is lawful. And if you use it, you are in violation of the law. And so anybody who uses armed force against any other human being and bring in about a fatality of any sort anywhere in the world is guilty of a crime. So you're yeah. saying that... Um Instead of uh, going to war with Germany, we should have taken Hitler's court. I'm not saying anything about the German war. Well, uh, no, except you know, that. Say, say Saddam then, uh, or any, any of these. But I, I want to use that example because it, it shows the fairy tale that we're living in to say that uh, if we had, if we had just allowed Hitler to carry on with his wars of aggression throughout Europe, and the way we should have dealt with it, uh, was not going to war, we should have taken them to court. Is that realistic? Are we really going to be able to take it? No, I'm not saying it's one of the things. If you, if you read back over that uh, statement, the second statement on this sheet, states shall accordingly seek early and just settlement of their international disputes by negotiation, inquiry, mediation, conciliation, arbitration, judicial settlement, 
resort to regional agencies or arrangements or other peaceful means of their choice. That's what I'm saying. That's what the law says. And it's about time that our government upheld and followed the law. But if, but if the law, um, you know, if, that cannot, if that's not possible and the law fails us, uh, uh, what are we left with? We're, we're only left with and war. We're only <coughs> left with war. Uh, defence is obviously the idea that we're talking about. We're not talking about just going out and uh, starting wars for the, for the sake of it. We're talking about yes, defence. We no, we are starting wars. We have fought six illegal wars since 1998. Never before in British history have we had such an appalling record of aggression. In the, that time, in the last 10 years, we have murdered at least 1.5 million people, of whom a third were children. That's 500,000 children. Can I just clarify here with one point? So, under international law, I think what we've heard is that wars of aggression are illegal, but wars of self-defense, if you're attacked, it's legal to defend yourself. Is that correct? Yes, and don't use the word war, because the, the real issue is a war starts with one nation attacking another. Now, that's starting a war. Crime. Defending yourself against an attack is lawful under the UN Charter. But if, if during that process you say we're defending ourselves and then you start attacking the dominions or other uh, associated uh, friends of the nation that started the original attack, you could then be starting to start a war yourself. 